powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 10 o'clock news on KAJ, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Don Fisher. A fairly quiet week weather-wise in northwestern Montana, but a new system coming through may bring, some, may bring some rain or snow for the weekend. For more, let's toss it over to Russ Thomas because I just couldn't wait to hand it to him any longer. Russ. <laughs> Thank you, Don. It is such an honor. Um, here's what I've got for you, though. And in, in all seriousness, it is going to be kind of a mess out there in many spots across western Montana, really from now all the way through about 11 to noon tomorrow. And that's what we have for the National Weather Service. It's issued a winter weather advisory. And it's not so much for snow. In fact, very little snow expected overnight and early tomorrow. It's because of that opportunity for rain, the warm air mass and moist air mass riding right over the very shallow, cold pool of air creates that freezing rain. Sidewalks, bridges, roads roads are going to be all very slick driveways. Well, then we'll have more on this coming up in just a few minutes, but just be careful when you're heading out tonight and tomorrow morning. All right, thank you, Russ. The Confederated Salish and Kootenai Tribe has a new chairman to add to their tribal council. Ron Trahan, who has served on the council for 14 years, was elected today. He served as chairman once before in 2014, and before Vernon Finley was the previous chairman. Trahan grew up in San Ignatius and served in the U.S. Army, worked with the Tribal Health and the Salish Kootenai Housing Authority and Kicking Horse Job Corp before joining the council. The Confederated Salish Kootenai Tribes um, have served, their members serve four years year terms and every two years five are up for re-election. Senator John Tester gets some tough questions today at his monolineal tour as it continues, but they didn't come from the media, but from Kalispell students. MTN's Jack Ginsburg shows us what he learned from those students. Senator John Tester was at Glacier High School in Kalispell Friday morning to talk to students from Glacier, Whitefish, Columbia Falls, Flathead, and Stillwater Christian School. After a brief introduction and background of himself, the senator answered questions ranging from net neutrality and the new tax bill to same-sex marriage and the state of the North Korea situation. They were asking questions that were uh, pretty in-depth. They'd done their homework, and uh, I think that's encouraging, and I think that... Uh, uh, I think it's positive for the country. There's so much further advance than we give them credit for that uh, I always tell them I, I, I long for when they take over running this country because they're going to they're gonna fix the stuff that we're screwing up. One of those students, Erica Bregg, says she was impressed by the questions asked by her fellow students, but was even more satisfied with the way the senator answered them. We asked some hard questions and he answered them so honestly and truthfully that it was really respectable because he gave us the truth and how he felt and didn't sugarcoat it because of our age or because of maybe our views. While Tester was fascinated with the students here in the Flathead, he says he has been impressed with kids across the entire state of Montana. I would love to tell you that, that the, the glacier is the exception and not the rule, but I've been all over the state talking to kids in double A schools, A schools, B schools, uh, C schools, and, and it's pretty much the same everywhere. These guys are engaged, they know what's going on, they're far more savvy than we give them credit for. Tester was asked a lot of questions about his personal opinions and what he would do to certain policy if he could change them. Bragg says she was happy to hear that he understands not everyone agrees and in her opinion is what makes him an ideal representative for Montana. He understands that everyone believes something different and that he's just going on his morals. And so I think that he's a great representative of Montana. Jack Ginsburg, MTN News, Kalispell. And to find future dates for the rest of the tour, you can find a link to that on our website. Overall, graduation and completion rates are up for students in Montana, while dropout rates are stagnant compared to last year, according to numbers released by the state's superintendent's office. According to this report, graduation rates saw a slight increase of about 2.2%, and there was a larger increase in Montana's completion rate, which is almost a full percentage point over last year, but Montana's dropout rate remains unchanged at just over 2%. Superintendent Elsie Arnson says that the Gains may not seem like much, but that they are pleased with the jumps and hope to build on that this year. Part of my job then is going to be expanding that completion rate even more so to acknowledge the fact that students do go out into the workforce, that they do accomplish school, um, and it might be in a different time frame because we all learn differently. And Arnson will be in Kalispell next week to talk to school leaders and students at the annual Montana Contractors Association meeting. While some people are getting home from work or eating dinner, some people enjoyed some runs under the lights at Big Mountain. Whitefish Mountain Resort is hosting a Northern Division 14 under and 16 under Shazalem qualifying race throughout this weekend. Those races kicked off Friday night and will finish up on Sunday morning. The course is set up just above Ed and Molly's Bar and Restaurant on the run Hell Roaring, which comes off the second chair. 
Chief of the race, Tim Hinderman, says that there have been races on Big Mountain for a long time, but never one like this. We've, you know, we've done league races starting back in the 70s and, and you know, the, the town league and that kind of thing. But to do a full on night race, USSA sanctioned with all of the bells and whistles is pretty fun. It's a, it's a neat deal. The kids love it. And the races will continue tomorrow on Ed's run at the resort. A new book critical of President Donald Trump has gone on sale despite threats of a lawsuit. And the book's author is defending his work despite White House attacks against its credibility. But President Trump is attacking the book saying that he did not authorize access to the White House and that he never spoke to the book's author and that it is full of lies and misrepresentations. Michael Wolf tells NBC's Today Show that the president is wrong. President Trump tried to stop the release of the book and had his lawyers send cease and desist letters to Wolf and the book's publisher threatening legal action. In response, the publisher moved the book's release date from next week to today, citing unprecedented demand. Fire and Fury is already at number one on the Amazon's bestsellers list. And the controversial book is also a bestseller in Missoula, where copies are already selling out across town. Bookstore owners say that their stock has largely been sold through, and the interest in Michael Wolff's look into Donald Trump's first year in the Oval Office is unusually high. MTN's Eric Clements reports. We crave gossip and, you know, controversy, so that controversy is definitely selling books. In fewer than 12 hours, the book Fire and Fury Inside the Trump White House had flown off the shelves of Missoula bookstores. It's also ruled the days of those bookstore employees. We've started the day with phone calls asking if we had it and we didn't have it right away in the morning, but we got it around 11 o'clock and we've just been selling it all day. Fact and Fiction, a locally owned Missoula bookstore, received 25 copies of the hotly anticipated book, a fair number higher than the typical order. Of that initial 25, only a handful remain at Fact and Fiction. In fact, this is just one of six left in the entire store. The book is selling incredibly fast and management says, if you haven't bought a copy yet, you may have to wait until a second printing. I have more hopefully coming next week, but I don't know if that order is going to come through. The publisher is out of stock. So they're doing another print run already, and we're not sure exactly when those will be available. Ponich Crouch says these types of books don't typically sell out at Fact and Fiction, at least not this quickly. No, no. Um, we don't typically have anything that does that unless it's something that gets a lot of hype somewhere or um, sometimes with local books that are really popular, but it's not a common thing to sell that many that fast. Other books critical of the Trump presidency have not received this level of success in Missoula. Not even former Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton's recent book, What Happened, comes close. Eric Clements, MTN News, Missoula. And for those unable to find a physical copy, digital copies of Fire and Fury can be downloaded on various ebook platforms. And it happened again. A Missoula convenience store is looking for its signature baby dino after thieves made off with the iconic statue during a stormy power outage last week. Managers of the Noon Sinclair at the corner of East Broadway and Madison say the three-foot-tall Sinclair dinosaur vanished sometime after midnight last Friday. This dinosaur, which has been a symbol of Sinclair gas for the past century, is smaller than some. It's made of aluminum but is still Kelly green in color and measures about six feet from nose to tail. Missoula police are investigating and Noons is offering a reward for the dino's safe return. And five years ago, a larger dino statue was stolen from the Noons outlet at the Y west of Missoula. Salute to Service is brought to you by Flathead Electric Cooperative, your not-for-profit member-owned co-op. When disaster hits, the American Red Cross is there. In this week's Salute to Service, MTN's Nicole Miller introduces us to the disaster program manager for the Red Cross in Kalispell. When Hurricane Irma and Maria hit the Virgin Islands back in September, the need for disaster relief was urgent, while many headed out of the area. This is Ted Koenig uh, coming to you from the U.S. Virgin Islands. Ted Koenig, the disaster program manager for the Red Cross Kalispell, headed into the storm's path of destruction. Right now, uh, Red Cross staff on this island and the other two islands are focused on delivering food, other basic staples to people who've been affected by uh, these terrific storms. Every eight minutes, the Red Cross brings help and hope to those who need it, whether the disaster is large or small. 
for Koenig service to the people devastated by the Category 5 storms, Senator Daines named him as Montanan of the Week in early December. Any evacuees needing space uh, tonight, um, food, lodging, um, welcome here. But Koenig's service goes far above and beyond his relief efforts to the people of the Virgin Islands. When the Red Cross opened a shelter over the summer in Hungry Horse in response to wildfire evacuations in Glacier National Park, he prepared it. We have cots, blankets, um, we'll be serving warm meals for anybody who might need them. Koenig spent about two uh, weeks serving the people of the Virgin the Islands, but you can typically productive. find him helping neighbors right here in the Flathead Valley. We respond to things like home fires or when there's larger disasters like wildfires or floods. Really, I help support and coordinate the volunteers. Again, uh, roughly 90% of our workforce here in the Red Cross that go out and do the work out in the field. Nicole Miller, MTN News, Kalispell. And he also served in the Peace Corps for three years. Up next, Russ is back with the rest of our forecast going into the weekend. And a cold snap in the east has frozen parts of one of the world's most popular attractions. Check it out next.